Our final speaker of the day is Martin Gustav Dentlinger, the provisional captain of the Rehoboth Baster community. The Baster people of Rehoboth are the descendants of European colonists and the indigenous Khoi people of Southern Africa that live in present day Namibia. The Baster people of Rehoboth had relative autonomy under both German and South African rule, but following Namibia's independence lost the right of self-governance as well as its land and cultural heritage. The Rehoboth Baster community is descendants of the European African settlers and the indigenous Khoi, Khoi people. The Khoi and San people were the indigenous people who lived in the southern part of South Africa at a time when the first Europeans arrived at which is called Cape Town today. Uh, their origin dates back to 1652 during the time of Jan van Rieberg, who was on the southern point of Africa in the Cape Colony. He landed at the future Cape Town on 6 April 1652 and fortified the sites as a halfway station for the VOC trade route between Netherlands and the East Indies. Van Riebeek was commander of the Cape, building a fort with improving the natural anchorage at Table Bay, planting cereals, fruit and vegetables, and obtaining livestock from the indigenous Khoi people. The Khoi, Khoi are a light-skinned people who with the Bushmen originally populated the Western Cape in South Africa and who were the, the progenitors of the South African Kalats, the Griquas, and other offspring. The political and social order at that time was of such an order that the new brown distinct race from either uh, Europeans and Khoi San people who were founded by the colonizers at the southern point of Africa. The genetic intermix between the Khoi Khoi and the European is not a salient issue. The central issue is that the Rehoboth Basta nation originated in South Africa as a Khoi Khoi tribe with their own lands. The Griqua part of the Bastas still lives in South Africa on land owned by them, Griqualand East and Griqualand West. The Bastas and the Nama were driven off their lands in South Africa by colonial expansion. The Bastas fled to Rehoboth after the Richtersfeld, which is that area where you can see the map uh, in Northern Cape in Southern Africa that was annexed by Britain in 1865. The Bastas in South Africa owned their land as indigenous people. They would not have had land if they were exclusively produ a product of colonization. European-African intermixing is a future uh, uh, feature throughout Southern Africa in Namibia. The Germans have racial and not social political intermix with the Herero, uh, which, is, which are tribes in Namibia, the Damara, Nama, Bushman, and the Bastards. In 1868, 90 families decided to emigrate to a new country then known as Southwest Africa. This country at the time was sparsely populated and then only by indigenous peoples. In 1870, they reached their destination, namely an abandoned mission station called Riobot. Riobot and surrounding territory belonged at the time to the Swart Boys, a tribe which was at the time known as Khoi. The Riobot Basta nation is not a derivative as it, as it is one of the first nations. The Bastas rented Riobot from the Swart Boys for a nominal fee and started to cultivate the land and also started on other forms of farming. They drew up a constitution, which later in history is known as the Paternal Law. The Paternal Law establishes the legal jurisdiction over the land of Riobot. It is set out uh, it sets out the political system, in other words, the state, and the regulations for collective and private ownership of land in Riobot. It contains a civil and a criminal code of law. The political structure of a typical Khoi Khoi tribe is comprised by a camp captain and his counselors. The captain is the head of the state like a president, a king, or a chief. This is the case among Khoi Khoi and Greek West tribes in South Africa too. During 1875, they started negotiations with the Swat boys for the purchasing of Riobo territory. Eventually, they bought the territory. And after the first election under paternal law, and bus the Busters divided into three groups. The reason being over the captainship. 
Group one remained in Riobot. Group two tracked northwards to Angola. Group three went back to South Africa. Uh, group one became uh, known as the Riobot Busters. They governed themselves according to the paternal law in this situation. Uh, the German missionary F. Heidmann played a very important role as advisor. The paternal law was in place until independence of Namibia, although severely eroded by the Germans, by South Africans, and eventually by independence dissolved by the Namibian government. The land claim of the Riobot, of Riobot Buster land. The claimants present the land claim on behalf of the natural descendants of the first indigenous peoples, the Riobot Buster Gemeente, which means congregation, commonly known as the Riobot Busters. The claimants are those descendants of Khoi Khoi, and the real uh, pronunciation is Khoi, which means human being, which means it's the same uh, name as Adam in the Christian Bible. Uh, and European identifying themselves as Riobot Busters whose socio-economic outlooks have influenced by colonial expansion of West European powers in Southern Africa, their ceaseless struggles against the dom uh, domination and the final struggle for survival in Riobot and to the defense of their land. Under ILO Convention Concerning Indigenous and Tribal Peoples in Independent Countries, number 169, distinguishes between tribal and indigenous people. The Riobot Busters declare this, themselves as indigenous on grounds of the importance of self-identification to their social, cultural, and economic conditions which distinguish them from other sections of the national community and whose status is regulated wholly or partially by their own customs or traditions, as well as by special laws or regulations stipulated in the consti constitution called the paternal laws. Uh, people in independent countries who are regarded as indigenous on account of their descent from populations which inhabited the country or a geographical region to which the country belongs at the time of conquest or colonization or the establish, establishment of present state boundaries and who irrespective of their legal status retain same, some of all of their own social, economic, cultural and political uh, institutions. Self-identification as indigenous or tribal shall be regarded as a fundamental criterion for determining the group to which the provisions of the ILO convention applies. The description of the land. Riobot originally compromised of, a, uh, of an area roughly 300 kilometers from east to west and 250 kilometers from no north to south. This was its size in 1870. Uh, this is about thrice the size of Belgium after successive German and South African occupation. About one third of this area remains, which is roughly about the size of Belgium. Uh, this land is now in dispute it is, as the incumbent re regime claims ownership over it and denies the Riobot Busters its uh, self-determination uh, uh, right. That is to continue administrating their land in terms of existing property relations. The history of property ownership in Riobot began with the allocation of private farms to the founding families of the Riobot Buster Nation, which settled in Riobot in 1870 by agreement with the local tribes, the Hereros the, and the Nama Nations. The Riobot Buster Nation paid the levies raised on the land. The rest of the land included the land around, and around the settlement Riobot that was collectively owned with every, by every male member of community entitled to the residential plot on the coming of age of 18 years. Land was also allocated for temporary private use, especially for farming purposes. Thus the land form, a, 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 the, the form of land ownership was both collective and individual private ownership. Since 1870, the Riobot Buster community administered their land in accordance with the paternal law in terms of the said property relations to the benefit of the whole community. Uh, the paternal law was the constitutional framework within which the Riobot Buster nation uh, before colonization existed. They concluded treaties on protection and land with the German Reich. It was the, the sole legal jurisdiction over the land of Riobot. 
The Supreme Court of Namibia in 1993 ruled that the paternal laws had indeed survived independence. Despite this legal status of the paternal laws, both the South African colonial re regime and the present regime disregarded all laws that were in place before independence of Namibia. To mention a few of these laws, I can refer to the, the land inheritance law, the deeds registration law, the land transfer law, project development consultations. Laws are made in this regard and in contradiction to the provision of the set of paternal laws. Whilst vast tracts of land were expropriated by first the German state and the South African colonial administration, the remaining land was administered as described until 1990, when the Namibian state illegally claimed ownership of this land and dispossessed the community in total. The expropriation of the Namibian government included investments, development projects, and other current assets and sacred monuments. In its quest to alienate the, common, uh, the community's right to the land, it relied upon the Bantustan legislation of 1976, in which the South African government conferred self-rule status to Riobot with statutory provisions to, the transfer, to transfer the ownership of property to the uh, of the community to the Bantustan government. This was illegal as no statute could displace the jurisdiction of the paternal law, nor could both individual and collective property rights be nullified by statutes or the mandate power, among others, against the very uh, terms of reference as a protector. What do the robot bastards claim and plead from the international community? Considering that the robot bastards were in no way a product of apartheid and had known self-government since 1870, the robot Basta nation is of the first nations of the Khoisan Sun. The bastards were the only people not granted status of communal land administrators or owners by the Namibian government, despite having settled in Namibia prior to European colonization of the country and the Bastas very strong traditional links to their land and a strong link to territories and surrounding natural resources. Distinct social, economic or political system and distinct language, culture and beliefs. The close ties of the Bastas uh, with the land must be recognized and understood as a fundamental basis of their culture, their spiritual life, their integrity, and their economic survival. It's not a, a, merely a matter of, of possession and production, but a material and spiritual element which they must fully enjoy, even to preserve their culture legacy and to transmit, trans, transmit it to future generations. I quote from the indigenous people and, uh, and the United Nations human rights system, fact sheet number nine, reverence two, which applies to the bastards who consider their land as baptized in the blood of their forefathers. I have no time to go into the detail of the genocide that took place, or not the genocide, but the killings that were there. The close ties of indigenous people with the land must be recognized and understood as a fundamental basis of their culture, of their spiritual life, their integrity, their economic survival for indigenous communities' relations to the land are not merely a matter of possession and production, but a material and spiritual element which they must fully enjoy even to preserve their culture legacy and transmit it to future generations." Unquote. What we got? We got a situation in which we were subject to exploitation of resources institutionalized corruption and, self and sell off of national resources, including our land. Land occupation by the Namibian Defense Force <coughs> without consultation to the authorities, the local, the, shall we say, traditional authorities. Ta tax registrations have been moved to three kilometers away. So you cannot register unless you have the money to go there for a business or vet uh, certificate applications and so forth. Vehicle testing grounds were closed down and moved 170 kilometers away. A state regulations which causes the impoverished community to lose land and home due to, legal, to the high legal cost. Nothing is left for the upliftment of the Namibian national 
and I include the other groups and communities, it is causing wholesale social disintegration and decay. We are now denied any form of self-determination while previously we at least administered the remnant of our properties which were not expropriated by the colonial occupiers. Of all the ethnic groups in Namibia, the Rebot Bastards were the only group singled out in the constitution, uh, also the only group not granted communal land, neither recognized as a traditional authority under the uh, Namibian Traditional Authorities Act. Although the Bastards do not regard themselves as a traditional uh, group under this act, but an indigenous people who enjoyed self-determination uh, rights long before the independence of Namibia. We are desperately fighting for the restoration of our rights under international law. We are illegally expropriated in terms of international law by the successive occupational administrations of the German Reich and also of the South African state. The jurisdiction of our constitution, the paternal laws of 1872, uh, written in 1868 in Warambad has not been ousted over the land of Riobot. This at least is affirmed in the Supreme Court of Namibia. Yet the Namibian state has for all intent and purposes illegally denied us a manner of, any manner of exercising our right to self-determination and seeks to complete our total expropriation and annihilation as a nation. The Riobot Basta nation management of land was done with the interest of human persons and families in mind. Therefore, it combined collective and private ownership in such a way as to lessen the contradiction between individual and, so and societal interest and even harmonized it. The land was developed firstly to the benefit of the community. This model of land utilization is ideal for uplifting the impoverished communities worldwide. Given that this impoverishment has been foisted upon us by Western imperialism, and given that the country obtained independence through agreement by Western powers endorsed by the United Nations, it is incumbent on former coloni colonial uh, countries to intervene and to seize the continual onslaught on colonial peoples through the, the land expropriation. The international community include Belgium, in include Belgium can take a massive step to support and to defend Riobot and restoration by putting pressure on the Namibian state to stop its illegal expropriation and denial of fun fundamental rights to the Riobot people. Our plea to the international community on ground of social development and justice are indispensable for the achievement and maintenance of peace and security within and among our nation. Our pursuit of economic and social development with full respect to identity, traditions, form of social organization and cultural values cannot be attained in the absence of peace and security or in the uh, absence of respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. Therefore, our plea demands international responsibility. Our cries goes out to the international community to prevent the extinction of the Riobot Buster community as an important global cultural heritage and to find ways and means under international law uh, international indigenous rights and covenants to pressurize the Namibian government to adhere to guarantees granted for its independence, even if it takes place in conditions for international assistance by donor nations or alternatively implement sanctions against the Namibian government or to assist the Basta nation financially or technically in order to save the nation from extinction or cultural genocide as the situation stands currently they are left without any means of preservation. Uh, to protest our sister groups against the Namibian government, actively, politically, and legal monitoring of our struggles in Namibia, and to assist the Basta nation to take their pleas to the World Court. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, how can we define indigenous? Can the Rohobo Bastards be seen as indigenous peoples, or rather, how can the Rohobot Bastards be recognized as having um, a continued existence since the 19th century, but not be seen as indigenous or a traditional community? And also, is this idea of a rainbow nation, does it actually reflect diversity, or is it really just about a continuation of uh, oppression? And then finally, 
Um, could you elaborate on how exactly would you like the international community to assist the Rojo Bot Pastors? Thank you. Well, uh, the Rio Bastos considered itself as uh, offspring of the Khoi Khoi at that time. They considered themselves as indigenous, seeing uh, that those that, uh, that, that fathered them uh, rejected them. So they had to, they had to uh, survive, even though their mothers also, at one stage uh, or in the beginning, rejected them but they are considered as indigenous because of their land ownership and because this is what we are. And uh, all the time we have been owners in that land. We would never have been able to own land uh, if we were not considered as indigenous. We would never have been able to negotiate in Namibia, in the South Af Southwest Africa then, with our uh, Khoi Khoi, uh, 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 brothers and sisters to obtain that land. And even because our captain at that stage had a relationship with the Herero people who owned uh, uh, the northern part of, of Wintuk, who described his, his area, uh, which is the Rehobot area, and he gave it to the Rehobot Bastards at that stage as an ally of one of the indigenous peoples. The Rainbow Nation, <laughs> I can tell you that is, that is just a story because it is not only us here that are treated by the Namibian nation in this way. It is uh, also other nations. And I think what's gonna happen, if it could happen that we will uh, restore or you, the international community could help us to restore, you will have other applications from the Nama people as well. Because in Namibia, uh, although they say it is a rainbow nation, it is controlled by the majority uh, culture, which, which is the northern culture, the Obambu people, even if they place them only as governors, as CEOs, and whatever. And I can tell you in Rio, but a very small and poor uh, community, uh, there has been in one term of the local government councillors, 83 million uh, been, uh, been, shall I say, stolen. Uh, we have taken, I myself has taken this up in, and they outvoted us. We took it to a lawyer. The lawyer took it to the minister. Uh, the minister, refused to execute judgment on it. We took it to the Ombudsman, we took it to the Anti-Corruption Commission, and we took it at last to the police, the commercial branch of the police. They haven't done a thing. So this is the situation with us. What was the last one again? The, interna <laughs> the international The Rainbow community. Nation, I've answered. How can the international community assist the Rokobot pastors? Yes, uh, I've stated that here that I think that the, uh, that the donor nations like Germany for especially and other nations, Finland and all those that are, that are granting grants to Namibia um, must place conditions on those grants to force them to honor uh, the guarantees that was given before independence of Namibia for the indigenous and the minority groups.